Guys, I try my best to be brutally honest when it comes to these reviews. I try to call it like it is and not put a sense of FOMO out there. With that being said though, the new Strand Trace Rifle in Scissor is the best legendary trace rifle in the entire game. It is one of the most must-have weapons of this season. Now to address the elephant in the room, yes, you need to play Trials of Osiris and you need to go flawless if you're looking to get the adept version of in Scissor. And I know for some of my PvE players out there, this is a deal breaker. But the good thing is, number one, it's a Available on Saint 14's rank up track at rank 10. It can also drop randomly at the end of matches and from trial ingrams. And number two, this is a seven month long season, which means there are going to be plenty of opportunities to get this weapon, even in its adept form. So again, I don't want to spark any FOMO here, but if you happen to find a good weekend of Trials of Osiris, maybe it's a map that's really clicking with you. And if Incisor happens to be the adept drop for that weekend, guys, go for it. Now I know this is going to be mainly a PVE weapon for most, but we do need to talk about it. In and PvP as well, as it does have potential. Now, looking at the base stats of this weapon, this is where we start to paint the picture on why this is the best legendary trace rifle. And that's because statistically, it is the best. It has by far the highest base stats out of every legendary trace rifle, besides its recoil direction being at 94, which really isn't that bad. And if you have the adept form, once mass worked, these stats will all be raised. But keep in mind, those stats aren't everything. Now, let's talk perks. In the third column, we have subsistence, envious assassin, Zim moment, perpetual motion, dynamic sway reduction, offhand strike, and slice. Over in our fourth column, we have killing tally, encore, attrition orbs, kill clip, hatchling, tap the trigger, and target lock. Now for both PVE and PVP, we have some absolutely fantastic perk combinations. And pretty much everything here is at least usable. For our third column, subsistence was the perk we were wanting the most. And thankfully, I got it. Actually, on my god roll with killing tally. Now subsistence is great because defeating targets will partially reload your magazine from reserves and this pairs beautifully with kill and tally which says that kills increase the weapon's damage until it's stowed or reloaded now kill and tally stacks three times with times three giving you that 30 percent increase to damage inside a pve and since this buff only goes away once you either stow or reload the weapon subsistence will help maintain that damage buff and for quite some time this is my personal pve god roll now there are other options as well you can roll things like envious assassin instead of subsistence but again if you're rocking something like Killing Tally, you're going to run into a situation where there's some conflict here in perk synergy. And again, the way I use trace rifles inside of PvE, I literally use it like a primary weapon, especially now considering that double special has been nerfed. And the only time I really swap off is when I'm running out of ammo or if I'm doing DPS with my heavy weapon. Now in that third column, we also have Slice, which depending on the activity you're in, this may be the better option. Slice reads that casting your class ability allows this weapon to sever targets on hit for an improved duration up to a maximum number of targets now we talked about this perk a lot in our lethal abundance video a lot of people think this is just a perk for pve but no this is a fantastic perk for both pve and pvp you see sever is a strand debuff that decreases the enemy's outgoing damage and this is a 15 percent debuff inside of pvp but a 40 percent debuff inside of pve which is massive now again in most places you don't really need sever but when we start talking tier four of coil or grandma or Nightfalls, which are launching next week, this is where having something like Sever can keep you and your teammates alive. And the beautiful thing is, is we have artifact mods like Torch, which increases our damage against those targets affected by stasis or strand debuffs. Sever here is a two-in-one with the synergy of our artifact mods. The ability to not only debuff our targets in both PvE and PvP, that's right, Torch still works inside of PvP, but also the ability to self-buff the weapon after debuffing the targets. It's beautiful to experience, guys. Now, for my PvE players, if kill and tally isn't your preference, you do have things like kill clip as well as target lock. But keep in mind, for target lock, to really get the most out of that damage perk, you really need to overload the magazine. Subsistence doesn't really work well here. Even though it does auto-reload the magazine, you're swapping targets. Therefore, you will be losing the buff. That's why Envious Assassin would be the better option when paired with target lock. I also don't really care for kill clip inside of PvE, considering trace rifles really aren't like reload friendly. And the max size just begs you to blow your load. Reloading gets in the way of that. And even though it's a nice 25% buff, I prefer to just have killing tally here. Now, if you're looking for ad clear, we also have hatchling, which is great for synergizing with the strand subclass. And I know a lot of strand users out there love hatchling, but we're going to get into why I don't think it's really necessary, at least for this season. Now, the last perk I want to touch on is attrition orbs. I really want this perk to be good. It's like Bungie keeps giving us new perks that just aren't that spicy outside of Onslaught. The problem with attrition 
dwarves, is that on every weapon, it takes way too long to proc. And the same thing applies here to Incisor. Against Coral, it takes a whopping 46 rounds to proc attrition orbs. Like, what the hell? So we talked about the stats and the fantastic perk selection. The third thing I'm gonna talk about is how does it feel? Why would you use this over other trace rifles? Why use this over Navigator, which is another strand trace rifle? Well, first, Incisor feels like a trace rifle. And I know, no sh cross. What I mean by that is that there's really nothing that's that much different than what other trace rifles feel like. There is a little more consistency inside of PvP, at least from what I felt. But the reality is, if you like trace rifles, then you'll like Incisor. If you can't stand trace rifles, like if the thought of even shooting one is repulsive to you, well, hell, fellas, Incisor's not going to change your opinion. But what it does do is that it allows you to free up that exotic slot, to have a strand trace rifle, but legendary instead. And I know we have Appenance this season, which is a stasis trace rifle. And yes, we're going to be reviewing that very soon. But let me just be frank. Strand for me inside of PvE is just better. It's a better subclass. It's more potent. It's got better synergy. And I know stasis is moving in the direction of getting a bit better, but it is bit by bit, whereas strand is already disgusting. With perk combinations like subsistence and killing tally, this synergizes beautifully. And it's also something you can't currently find on any other trace rifle. And lastly, it's the potential when you synergize it with the strand class itself and the correct build. First off, I would highly recommend using the following artifact mods with Incisor. I know Solar's like the focus of the season, but Strand has some great artifact mods. We did an entire video breaking down every artifact mod for the season, but I want to quickly go over the most important ones. First, we have Unraveling Orbs. We're picking up an Orb of Power, Grant Strand Weapons, Unraveling Rounds. You pair this with Kill and Tally and some Strand Siphon mods, and you'll be generating orbs with these. The other mod I want you to use is Horde Shuttle. We're damaging unraveled targets with the weapon, occasionally spawns a Threadling. This is going to synergize directly with Unraveling Orbs and generate a ton of Threadlings for you, which is why I said for this season, you don't really need Hatchling. Sure, you can double dip here, but do just give me the damage. Lastly, and this one is a personal preference if you have the room, but Dragon's Bite is great as breaking combatant shields with a Strand or Stasis weapon has a chance to suspend or freeze that combatant, with Season of the Wish Armor increasing this chance. Again, not a must-have perk, but if you happen to be wearing Wish Armor, I would definitely select this for some some free suspends occasionally. Now for the subclass synergy, you've got some flexibility. You can rock fragments like Thread of Warding to give yourself Woven Mail when you pick up an Overpower since you're going to be generating tons of orbs. Thread of Generation is just a staple for most of our strand builds to generate grenade energy just by dealing damage. Some other good picks are things like Thread of Transmutation to spawn tangles on weapon kills when Woven Mail is active and Thread of Evolution to buff our Threadlings if you got a good Threading build going on. Now in terms of builds, we're not going to get super in-depth, but on Hunter, we pair this with our Fo Tracer Rolling Maelstrom build from last season. We'll actually link a dim link below if you want to try this out, but this performs excellent in our current sandbox, especially paired with our artifact mods. I was able to generate tangles and threadlings and then unraveling targets left and right. It was a blast in the coil, guys. Now for my warlocks, let me tell you something. I fall in love with warlocks when I see them leaning into support. When I see that warlock from afar rocking that sexy Cenotaph mask, oh, I know it's going to be a good time in whatever content we're doing. And in Scissor here, we be perfect for a Cenotaph Warlock, as it steadily reloads a portion of your magazine from reserves, so you may not even need perks like subsistence. But the big factor is the ability to mark vehicles, bosses, and champions for your teammates, and when an ally defeats them, this will generate special ammo for you and heavy ammo for your allies. It is such a good exotic. It almost retired Aeon Gauntlets, at least until this past season, which we're going to be breaking down here in a few days. But the point is, Incisor is a fantastic trace rifle for Cenotaph users. Again, dim links down below if you want to check that out. Now for my Titans, it's hard recommending anything strand related that doesn't involve us using our fists, right? One-two punch shotgun melee combos are just too good. So until those take back seats, for the time being, just keep punching. Now finally, the last question for PvE. What about Navigator? Well, it's funny you ask. I still don't even have it. RNG is brutal, man. But listen, that's not to say Navigator isn't still a great trace. With the right builds, it allows you to do some pretty busted things. Most notably, grapple melee on Titan over and over and over. Over. But Navigator is more of a support exotic, whereas Incisor is a legendary trace rifle that puts out hefty damage. And if you wanted to roll that slice roll, you can sever targets just like Navigator can. One of the big selling points though about Navigator, and why I think Navigator is still a good option, is that it has the ability to grant your allies woven mail. So again, Navigator is still a great option. But considering my own builds, where I want to rock an exotic, Incisor has taken first place for me. Now let's talk PvP, guys. Boy, oh boy. Let me just say, base time
time to kill for trace rifles is actually really good. 0.73 seconds. And you have like variations of forgiveness all the way down. The range on trace rifles is also really good. At 100 range, reaching up to 39.88 meters. But even like a base range of 71 still reaches up to 35 meters. Now, I'm not going to really get into killing tally as it's not really a perk I would look to utilize inside of PvP. Not saying it's not good, but considering the ammo economy, that's going to be the thing that's going to hinder you the most. And again, the moment you stow or reload this trace rifle, that buff goes away. And look, you run into the same issue with Kill Clip. You see, Kill Clip does bring our TTK down to 0.6 seconds and even all the way down to 0.53, depending on your resilience values. But understand, guys, the ammo economy. Not only are you going to have to go over there and get a kill, but then you're going to have to go pick up ammo and then you're going to have to reload. Now, I was not able to actually land a target lock roll, but let me just say target lock on Lethal Abundance didn't help me much either. And that's because I was taking advantage of the same Frosties plus Radiant plus Torch build. If you remember, we were able to bring Lethal Abundance and it's time to kill down substantially because of the synergy. We would proc Radiance, we had the perk Slice, and when we would apply that debuff to targets, this would buff our damage up substantially, I might add. And when you jump through all those hoops, and I know it may seem like a lot of hoops to jump through, but on Hunter with Acrobat's Dodge, it's really not. When you do get that going, it feels amazing. The question is, does Incisor offer that same lethality? Now, with Radiance plus Torch plus Slice here on Incisor, this substantially increases our damage. We're talking like a base of 13 damage per body, 17 damage per crit, increasing up to 20 damage per crit, and 15 damage per body. Now, keep in mind, when it comes to Slice and Torch, the first shot, no matter what, will be base damage. And if it's Radiant, then it's Radiant plus base damage. And it's after that point that Slice will then sever the target and then proceed to proc Torch. But with all those things applied, and Scissor can reach a time to kill value of 0.54 seconds on almost max resilience guardians if you can land all crits. But even its body shot time to kill is actually almost the same as base optimal time to kill. So close to like 0.73 seconds. It sounds so good. But guys, this ammo economy inside of PvP is terrible. I can't tell you how many times mid gunfight I would run out of ammo. And I know some of you are going to be like, Cross, just land your shots. That too is a prop. Personally, I feel like trace rifles do a terrible job at combating flinch. And what I found myself in was a number of situations where SMGs would chew me up. And that's pretty much everything you use these days. SMGs are very, very good. But despite my time to kill value being really good after jumping through all these hoops, what I found was that I needed to have all these things propped. You see, Lethal Abundance was already a good auto rifle. We just happened to stack all those things and made it nasty. In Scissor though, it is a good trace rifle, but there's just so many things limiting this special weapon slash primary weapon hybrid. Because it's not like a one hit kill weapon. It's in that weird middle ground. Except in this situation, you're being heavily punished by our ammo economy. Personally, guys, I had trouble making and scissor work in PvP. And that's with a number of different roles. And believe me, guys, I wanted to make it work. But if I had to choose a trace rifle to bring inside of PvP right now, and scissor would be a pretty good option, but I would probably just go cold heart. We did a live review of cold heart last season, and it fries. And scissor here can fry. But at base, I find the weapon struggles, at least in the current meta and with our current ammo economy. And the only way I could truly win duels was if I played extremely methodical or I had to have Radiant, Torch, Slice, all those things proccing to really get the most out of it. Now listen, I know the weapon has zim moments. I know it has a ton of things here like tap the trigger that can increase the ease of use of the weapon. And I'm not saying those perks aren't good combinations. And I think for some of you, you're going to want to actually spend the time to really master this weapon. But for me personally, guys, I don't think I would use it in this current meta. In Scissor is a PvE weapon first. And until Bungie changes ammo economy inside of PvP, Trace Rifles are never going to be a go-to option for me. So guys, that is our review here for the new weapon for Trials of Osiris this season. Try it out for yourselves, guys. And again, no rush to get this weapon. We've got a very long season ahead of us. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.